Uh, thank you all. Uh, so does the sound work correctly? It does. Is it all? Okay, so let's start. So uh, as I was introduced, I'm, my name is Svetlana Sakova, and I'm a developer advocate from JetBrains. And today we're going to talk about Kotlin coroutines. Coroutines, coroutines are the key new feature introduced in the latest version of Kotlin release, 1.1. And its goal is to simplify asynchronous programming. It's important that we didn't invent it. The Kotlin team didn't, uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, invent this uh, concept of coroutines. The concept existed for quite a while already. So it was uh, first introduced in the 60s. And at that time, uh, they were used to model synchronicity f uh, when we didn't uh, have threads. So in a single threaded environment, languages used coroutines to model what we now uh, you, what, what we now call asynchronous programming, what we, what we now do with threads. So, Donald Knuth is, in his book, opposed coroutines uh, that are independent parts of the program which can interact with each other to main routine that just uh, calls and uses subroutine. So, then there is a question, so why did we need to return this concept from the path now, today, when we have already threads and other means to do asynchronous programming. And the goal of this talk would be to answer this why question. And at first, we'll start with motivation and we'll look at async await. Uh, some of you pr are probably already familiar with what uh, async await do. So async await is the feature that uh, is already present in some of the languages like C Sharp. But if you don't, I will explain it in detail in this talk. So again, async await is some feature that is used already in other languages. Uh, wh what, uh, what do we use it for? There is a very trivial, straightforward example. We're just loading an image, and then we're showing this image. Okay, it's very simple, it's very straightforward, but it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Because loading image is a time-consuming operation, and uh, our user will be blocked if we try to do this loading on the main thread. That's a common problem, and there are common solutions to it. One of the solution, general, general like it's not one solution, it's just a uh, a huge bank, uh, a huge pile of different solutions. They all use callback approach when you just extract the rest of your computation in a callback and do the, and explicitly say that something has to be done after this timing, time consuming operation finishes. And a sync way to provide another solution to the same problem. So now, instead of using callbacks, you can you can just await the computation somehow. So you can say, okay, at this point, I will await this time consuming computation on my general thread. So there is no callback. There are, now we, we, we can do, we can solve this problem without callbacks. So I haven't yet explained how I think await works. So uh, we will return to it. Uh, a little bit later. My just uh, uh, idea here is to, to say that, okay, our goal is to avoid callbacks and to provide you more direct way to do asynchronous programming. Nice goal. Uh, and now we're ready to discuss how can we achieve this goal, how we support this async await. But before that, as, a, as I already mentioned, async await are a feature already available in different languages like C Sharp, and C Sharp Async and await are keyword, are language keywords. So they are built in in the language. If you are familiar with C Sharp, uh, and if you are familiar with this feature, you can just use it in Kotlin in the similar way, in the similar fashion. Because there we, we have the same async and await. However, in Kotlin, they are not keywords in the language. They are just regular functions. So you see here that the code looks very similar, so you can express the same, the same ideas, but in, a, in Kotlin, it's not, it's not the feature. I think it's, it's not the feature I think of it, it's the feature of coroutines. So in Kotlin, we provide the basic support for coroutines on their language level, and we can implement 
different features from different languages, like a sync await and a language library. So again, I think a way to the feature that uh, proved to be useful in C Sharp for quite a while already. So we know from like uh, other worlds that it works, and now we can use it in Kotlin in our JVM world. So now let's discuss what the coroutine is, how it provides the support of a sync await, and how it all works. We're ready for that. Uh, or maybe not ready. Uh, what's going on? Because I have uh, this. I think I have to. Yes, sorry. So uh, now we're going to discuss. We, we're going to compare threads and coroutines. We're going to discuss how coroutine is similar to a thread and how it is different from a thread and how they interact with each other. So at first, first uh, level of understanding what the coroutine is. Coroutine is very similar to a thread. It's not a strict de definition of a thread, it's just like description, but the same description works for coroutine as well. So from the point of view of developer, coroutine is just a sequence of instructions. However, different coroutines can, can be run independently, can interact with each other, and it's all are uh, done, it's, they all managed, so the threads are managed by scheduler, the coroutines are managed by the Kotlin compiler. But the first level of understanding is that thread, uh, coroutine is like a thread, something like a thread. However, it's more lightweight. So coroutine takes much less memory and much, uh, it requires much less resources than a thread. Thread usually requires one to two megabytes of memory. Coroutine requires several, uh, like more like kilobytes, so it's it, it much less. And you can create much more coroutines for your application than threads. So we have an example in our documentation when, a uh, very simple example, when if you try to create 100,000 of threads, uh, your program throws uh, out of member exception. However, it works fine with coroutines. So now you're intrigued and you can go to read our documentation. Uh, so in general, yes, they, are, they require less memory and you have more of them in the application. Okay, now, so now we know that coroutine is similar to a thread. So uh, we are going to discuss how they're different from a thread and how they interact with each other. Uh, the way to think, the uh, convenient way to think of a coroutine is as uh, of a computation that can be suspended. I will use the following notation during this, uh, this presentation. I will use the line to draw a thread, like here, and a block to draw a computation, a general computation. That can be a coroutine or something other. And coroutine is a computation that can be suspended. So somehow we can take these coroutines and put it away from, from our threads. Why? Why suspend? And to answer this question, let's discuss at first how can we in general do asynchronous computations. A very naive approach would be to start a new thread for every new computation. This works. It is very simple and straightforward. However, it's too expensive. So threads are expensive and you just cannot create the thread all the time. So uh, in general, we as developers would like to reuse threads. And executor helps us here. So executor represents a construction of a fixed number of threads where we can add somehow our computations. And in this case, threads will be reused. It's more. Uh, it's better in terms of performance and everything. The only difficulty here will be to manage de uh, managing dependencies. And actually, before Java 8, before Completable Future without Rx, it's really difficult to, uh, to, uh, to write uh, dependencies between your computations. And uh, for instance, uh, Imagine the example, like uh, when we have one uh, general computation and it wants to start uh, two other actions, preferably asynchronously, and then wait for, for, for the result. Uh, and we want to emphasize it using executor using threads. 
Uh, without RxJava or completable future is difficult. However, with the RxJava and completable future, you just uh, ex you just cut your computation to two parts. Uh, you uh, store the rest of your computation in a special callback, and it works. And you can say, after these computations are completed, please start, please call this callback, and it works. However, let's uh, make a step back. And uh, think of what's, so again, what was wrong with just blocking the thread? So our, our, my image is very simple, it's just like, uh, and the code for this is rather straightforward. Just start two things and then use the results. But if we use, if we do it with threads, it would be again too expensive because the first thread will be idle, will, it won't be reused for something else, and it's not good in terms of performance. And if our main thread is UI thread, it's even worse, because in this case, our user will be blocked. So it's not the way how we do the things. So to, to, to uh, have better performance, to have uh, better responsiveness, we, uh, we, we somehow split these computations into callbacks, into several computations, etc. But let's imagine what if we could do the same approach but with something more light right, than threads. And here you can see the power of coroutines. So in essence, you can express this simple pattern. Uh, you can write very straightforward code, but with a concept that is more lightweight than, than threads. So with coroutines, you can write direct uh, code, like in this example, and you can uh, instead of blocking the thread, you just suspend the coroutine. You just uh, take your computa you just take your computation, put it away somewhere, and then when it's ready, when the result is ready, you continue it. So that's why you don't need the callbacks. So the compiler does all this job for you. You can express the code in a straightforward manner. Okay, now <laughs> I'm uh, suppose you are a bit tired of this of just pictures of just images. So. Yeah, now, and uh, with the UI threads, it works in the same way. Uh, so now we are going to look at some code. And at first, I want to emphasize that Kotlin, uh, inter uh, with the support of coroutines, goes with the support of this suspend keyword. And uh, in Kotlin, with coroutines, you can mark uh, the functions as suspend, and that will mean that this function represents the computation that can be suspended. It represents the computation that can be put away somehow. So now let's go back to, to code, to our image example, and see how it works in terms of these computations, suspended computations, etc. So yes, here is our example. We have two functions, a sync and a wait. And now we are ready to understand what exactly a sync and a wait do and how they work. A sync, in essence, tr just starts a new computation. So when you say a sync, some, uh, some something, it just uh, so uh, for now we don't think about where it starts it, uh, in uh, in what executor we will. I'll return to it a bit later. But uh, in general, you can think of this as, OK, it just creates this new computation and starts it somewhere. And a wait is the point that suspends computation. So a wait is called a suspending call. And uh, uh, actually, a wait is declared as a suspend function. So you can ask, how do you call this await? But if we look at this example, you can see that, okay, we call this load image async. Load image async actually returns a type of, an, an object of deferred type. And this deferred declares a, a method await, a suspend method await. So, okay, await is just a suspend function. It's a library function declared as suspend function. And uh, what it does is the marker that tells the compiler to suspend the computation. 
So for simplicity, let's extract the result of load image async into another variable for, to, for us to understand more easily what's going on. So it's the same code. It's just, it's very similar to how the code is generated because when Kotlin compiler generates the byte code, it will uh, anyway extract it into the variable. And now let's follow and understand what's going on here. So at first, we just start a new computation. So we now know that async starts a new computation. And uh, this load image async is some new computation started somewhere. And now we, uh, and we just have the reference to this computation. And when the Kotlin compiler reaches this await call, await is the point that is the marker that says the compiler, OK, now suspend this computation until the, res the result is ready. So when the Kotlin compiler sees this await, it gets this blue computation, process image, and puts this aside. And, the, and we continue. And we continue, and lo like, like the image is loaded. And uh, await suspense computation and continues it when the result is ready. So uh, when image is loaded, when green computation completes, uh, comp uh, compiler understands that, the code understands that, and returns the process image to a thread, continues it. So now you have this straightforward code without callbacks that just works similar to thread, but uh, instead of blocking thread, it suspends your computation with using coroutines. And uh, there can be a question on which thread it continues the computation. And the answer to it, actually, is that you specify that. And um, I have to admit here that I somewhat lied in the previous slide, because at least for now, you cannot use a sync without these first parameters that specifies where you want to start your coroutine. So uh, uh, for now, you have to specify this uh, like executor, where do you want to, 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 to start your coroutines. And here we can uh, use the common pool that contains the regular fork, jo fork join pool under the hood. And that means that your, crout uh, your routines can be started and continued on any available thread. And here you can see that routine can be started on one thread and continued on another thread, which is free at the point. And that means that Coroutine saves all the state to be continued, so the state of all the local variables, et cetera. So it, you, you, I, I hope you start to understand how it, should, how it should work. For Android and for other environments where there is the main UI thread, you can specify that I want to, uh, to, to uh, start this computation and I want it to be run on UI thread only. You just say a sync UI, and that means that your computation will be started and will be continued only on UI thread. And uh, you see that while this computation, this blue computation, the second image is suspended, UI thread can be used for something else. So another request from the user, some red computation is started, and the blue one will be continued on the main UI thread after this red one is com complete. And you also can specify, so there are not just two executors. You, you, the, uh, you can uh, create your own that suits your needs more. So there is uh, some kind of flexibility when you work with coroutines. And uh, uh, you, you, uh, there, there is a way to customize things. Suspension might not actually happen if the result is already available. So uh, there is an example. We again we start this load image async. Uh, imagine we do some other work while image is, async, is loading. Uh, for instance, our image is cached or it's rather it's very small, so the result is available. And in this case, uh, when we call await, if the result is ready, we can just continue. So no overhead is created. Let's now look at the example with two asynchronous computation, the images that I, show, that I showed you before. And now there is actual code that represents these starting two asynchronous computations. And um, 
Uh, we just uh, say that we want to overlay these uh, two images, and we have a function that returns a new image, which is the result of overlaying uh, the first and the second one. And uh, we want to uh, asynchronously load these two images, uh, probably in parallel, if we can do that, and, uh, and after that to show the result. And to do this, we can say load first image, load green image, this starts the first green computation. Load image async the red one. This starts the second red computation. And after that, uh, when we call the first await, our main overlay async computation is suspended. It's put away somewhere. And when the result is ready, we can return this computation back. Actually, uh, under the hood, uh, it, will be uh, it, will, it can be suspended two times because we have two await calls to suspend suspension points, possible suspension points. But uh, uh, these details uh, don't matter, and I does matter for now. And I hope that this image illustrates well what's going on here. There is an example of of having a, of starting a computation on the UI thread. So uh, we. I uh, can say just launch something in the UI thread. And here you see that we can start another computation in the context of the UI thread. Then uh, say overlaying a await. And uh, when we call await, again our computation put, uh, is put away. It's, not, uh, it's no longer on the UI thread. And uh, after we have the result, it's, it's put back. So I. Uh, suppose, I, I hope that now it should be uh, somewhat clear what, or how it all works and what I, I say, uh, uh, what I think does and what the coroutines do. Uh, the question, what's about handling exceptions? What about, what, how do we process errors? And the answer is that a way just th rethrows the exception. So regular try catch works. And uh, <coughs> note that you can throw an exception in one coroutine and then uh, catch it in the other one and uh, uh, just uh, uh, handle it in the other one in the other thread. So in this example, we throw it in the green coroutine and uh, uh, catch it in the outer coroutine that was suspended, for instance. And now it returns and handles this exception. So you just write your regular code, like you write with threads, right? Uh, you you um, write uh, for, for, for regular stuff without using these callbacks and other ways, uh, other advanced ways of handling exceptions. The other question that, you, that may arise at this point, how, ca uh, how can you cancel the coroutine? And uh, yes, you can cancel it. You just uh, say uh, job cancel. Um, probably I forgot to ma mention this. Uh, the, 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 we, we have here the different function. So uh, before that, we have only a sync. But now we see launch as well. It does absolutely the same, with the difference that it doesn't return you the value. So launch just starts the computation without. Uh, so you can join it, you can cancel it, but you can. Uh, but it. Uh, it uh, doesn't mean to return a new result. So, uh, if you uh, and uh, cancellation works similar to threads. So, when you have a thread and you want to, uh, it to be cancelable, you have to check explicitly whether it was cancelled or not. And the same approach works with coroutines. So, you just uh, check: uh, is it act is it selective or was it cancel cancelled? Uh, library functions that, like await, for instance, check for cancellation explicitly. So if you use await somewhere at the point when you call await, your, if, if your coroutine is cancelled, uh, the, 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 it will notice it. And you can also run the part of code, for instance, in the try block without cancellation. So uh, for try blocks, it's a regular case when you want it to, to, to be performed uh, independently of uh, whether the coroutine was cancelled. OK, so now uh, we have plenty of time, or at least some time, I suppose. And uh, now. Uh, we are going to discuss something important. Uh, so now you have the basic understanding of how coroutines work and how a sync await works. And now I want to share with you uh, the novelty of Kotlin approach. 
Because I think about it's a feature existing uh, in other languages like C Sharp. However, Kotlin doesn't introduce I think about keywords. It introduced coroutine support. And uh, with, the, with the support of coroutines, it allows you to actually define your own suspend functions and uh, organize your code uh, your, in, a, in such a way that all the places, all the points of the code that can be suspended are marked with this suspend modifier. So yeah, there is the first question, whether you can define your suspend function. And yes, you can. And let's look at an example, the other one, the new one. And uh, this example represents just a simple consecutive logic. So say we have like three operations we can log in, uh, just uh, load uh, some user identifier, then we can, uh, as a separate operation, load user data. And at the last operation, we can show this data. And when you, when you write this code in a straightforward manner, like first uh, get user ID, then get user data, and at last show data, you have two points where your uh, computation can be, like if you do it with threads, can be blocked, can uh, something that can have time. We can imagine that it, some, it uh, does some network requests and uh, the connection can be not good, etc., etc. So uh, they are marked. So yes, you have two points that can cause some problems. The first way is to rewrite this code. So yes, now we want, want, we want it better. We want to avoid this blocking. And the first approach is to rewrite this code with a sync and await. To do this, you just, instead of returning user ID and user data from your functions, you refactor it and make them return special deferred type. We saw it uh, before, like a sync returns deferred. And deferred is another uh, word for completable future, for promise. It's just, it's just the synonym. So in essence, it does the same. And uh, in your function, uh, you have now, instead of user ID and instead of user data, you have deferred objects. So you have to await for them. Uh, rewriting, after re re rewriting the code to this one, th this works. That's fine. And actually, this is how a sync await works in C Sharp. So when you code in C Sharp, you always have to define this async, await, uh, this async, and always uh, provide the await for them. However, in Kotlin, you can do even better. Because in Kotlin, you can define your own suspend functions. And that means that you can declare all these functions as suspend functions. So instead of returning deferred, you now return expression directly. And uh, you can uh, declare this show user info also as suspend function. And inside the suspend function, you, you, can, you can just, uh, you, so this is the code that we saw in the first slide with threads. So this is exactly the code that we, that we have initially. But now it, it works with suspension. So now instead of blocking the user at when the connection is bad, you suspend your computation awaiting when you, when you got your result. So the code looks the same, but, but it works. And uh, there might be a question again. Where can you call the suspend function? And there are series that you can call suspend function either inside other suspend functions or inside so-called coroutine builders. And we actually, we already saw coroutine builders. Coroutine builders is just our, it's, it's a formal name for launch and async functions. And their goal is to start a coroutine. And there is one more unblocking, uh, which actually interacts with the regular blocking world. And uh, our unblocking will be the entry point to all these coroutines uh, programming. So coroutine builders start a coroutine. And uh, looking a little bit under the hood, we actually use suspend modifier not only to declare suspend functions, but also we mark uh, lambdas 
as suspend lambdas, and uh, Croton Builder is any functions is any function that takes this suspend lambda as a parameter, and in essence, this suspend lambda is what represents a coroutine. So when you start with the coroutine builder, this new coroutine, it is marked as something within a suspend context. You can declare a nested coroutine, so you can start a coroutine inside the other coroutine. So in this example, I start this launch first coroutine in the UI thread, and then we have a sync that starts another coroutine inside the first one. And uh, uh, here you, you, you see these uh, s uh, symbols, this error with uh, this, this, this symbol. And, uh, and they represent uh, the suspension points. So you can see them in IntelliJ or in Studio. Uh, they, they mark you directly where your computation might be suspended. So they, uh, they are placed whenever you call the suspend function. A little bit of implementation details. Actually, when you declare this suspend function, the Kotlin compiler secretly adds an extra parameter, continuation. And in essence, continuation represents a generic callback interface. So in the end, it's still programming with callbacks. However, in this case, all uh, they are hidden by the Kotlin compiler. So you can think of it like that. And uh, another internal detail, that coroutine body, coroutine is cheap. It is represented by just one object. And uh, it is compiled to a state machine, and uh, every suspension point represents one of the states. So when your coroutine reaches some suspension point, it is put away, and uh, it's stored in the first state, then you return it, then it reaches the second suspension point, it's put away, it's stored in the second state, etc. Again, in our documentation, you can find the exact example of the bytecode that Kotlin compiler generates for the state. I will leave it to you to, to, to find it, because anyway, it doesn't for this slide, because you have to think calmly for some time to, to observe it and to digest uh, this to understand how it works. But uh, we have it. And uh, a couple, I still have some time, a couple more words about interaction between coroutines and regular words. So you, you now have all your coding code bases, Java code, some coding code, and how, do you st uh, how, how they inter inter interop with each other, because Kotlin is about interoperability. So we have to think about interoperability in this case as well. First question for you, uh, how do you think, can you call a suspend function from Java? Because I've, actually I've already shown you, and the answer is that probably you don't want to call it directly, because to call it, you have to provide this continuation parameter. And Kotlin compiler somehow does all the magic, but with Java, you have to do it by hand, and it's not the way we, uh, it's not the way it intended to be done. So it's possible, but probably not the best idea. However, there is an easy way how to, how to interact with Java. So if you have your suspend function declared in Kotlin, you can just wrap it into some kind of future or promise or deferred and return it to Java. So if you have Java 8, you can wrap it into completable future. If you have Frigs Java, you can wrap it into single. And afterwards, you can, call, you can use it from Java uh, in this way, in a regular way, working with the compatible feature of Java. Another thing, if you are working with some third-party library, and this library provides callback-based API, you can, again, instead of uh, calling it directly, providing the callbacks, you can wrap into suspend function. Uh, this function will use special intrinsic a Kotlin function suspend coroutine. Uh, I won't go to, I, I don't want to dive into details of, of how it's implemented. Uh, you, again, you can just 
uh, research it and uh, think about it for a while. But the idea is that it's, it's doable, so it's just a, a pattern, a template that you can, you can do and you can work with all these third-party API in a way using these suspend functions. The same can be done with RxJava. Uh, and uh, uh, so you can uh, similarly uh, wrap it. However, with RxJava, there is a wait function defined, suspend wait extension functions, uh, extension function defined in the library. So you can just call a, another wait function on RxSingle or completable future. So, you know, Kotlin has extensions, and with extensions, we can, uh, we can provide this very uh, native experience. Like, uh, a wait is not a keyword, it's just a function, so you can really declare this function for, for all the type of features that you, that you have in your projects, and that will work. I expect this question, so we have, like, five more minutes, and uh, I expect you to ask, like, what about RxJava? So we now want to use RxJava, and uh, does it, how, how does it correspond with interacts with core teams? And uh, uh, I want to, to illustrate my answer with, uh, with the same example that we used so far. So we had this code. We rewrote this with suspend function. It looked very similar to the one, to the straightforward naive version that you write by hand when you first look at the problem. It can be rewritten with completable features, with a bunch of operators. It can be written with RxJava, with a bunch of operators, and with the callbacks that provide all these operators. And I uh, think that uh, I try to, uh, to state here, to illustrate here, is that probably uh, there are, you don't need a Rx for all kind of tasks. So there exist tasks uh, that, uh, so, so like, if, if, you try, if you strive hard to add a Rx for your application, like if you try to find somewhere where you have to, have, where you have to add your Rx, you ha have to invent this observable, that probably coroutines will suit you better for this case. And in general, it's not the question of whether Rx or coroutines. There are a, a, a uh, a great amount of tasks where Java uh, really solves the problem. It provides you a great way to manipulate observables, to uh, correspond with the changes that uh, uh, happen somewhere. But there are other a really big pile of tasks when you just want some consecutive business logic. And in this case, probably it's more intu intuitive to use direct style of programming with coroutines. Coroutines won't block your thread, and you can use them directly. And also, there is a bunch of tasks where you can probably uh, use both. So you saw already that if you, try, if you some, for some reason, want to call suspend functions from Java, you can wrap it into a Rx single or there are the case if you, uh, if you uh, are writing custom operators for your, uh, for your program, for Rx, coroutines allow you to, to write them in a much easier fashion, uh, in a much simpler way. Again, you can find this into documentation, like how the classic example is written in the coroutines, and it's much uh, more understandable in this case, because you know that with back pressure and others, it's hard to provide your own custom operators for X. Okay, so now I have two of this, and uh, uh, we're almost done. So just uh, some wrapping up and a couple of references. And uh, I, so I showed you this first uh, part of this slide at first, when I illustrated that, okay, on a language level we have coroutines, and we have a sync await in the defined in the library. But in fact, we have much more. We have also support for channels, support for actors. We even have the support for yields that is not about asynchronous programming, but is implemented using the same concept of coroutines. You can find it all again, in the documentation. So this coroutines feature is something very powerful. It provides us a lot of means how to, how to do asynchronous programming in a new way. For now, coroutines are released in the experimental status. So uh, in general, it's, it is a very new approach. 
So uh, we want uh, as much feedback as we can gather at this point. So we want the community, that means you, <laughs> to try it and to give the feedback. And uh, uh, I used to, to answer this when question and um, I can't say when, because the, for now the approach is uh, that uh, the more you try it and the more feedback you give us that that works, how that works, uh, the faster it will be released. But anyway, in JetBrains, we try hard to provide the easy means to, uh, uh, to, to migrate your code so you can use it safely now and uh, uh, when we release it, the support library will be provided, so the code that you write now with coroutines will continue to be supported. And I think that uh, everything that I've, to, I've discussed in, the, in this talk won't be changed, so the basics won't change. Some uh, more deep things into the library may change, that's why we want to this approbation period, but anyway, it's up to you now. Uh, there are links, and I want to mention that uh, this library uh, is mainly written by Romain Lazarov. And uh, if you want a more deep, so, so the, 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 there is a brilliant guide, a uh, guide to coroutines by example, it's uh, also written by Roman. And if you want a more digression into this topic, you can Google his talks, and, uh, and uh, yeah, here is the guide, and you can also find his talk in the a little, a minute of advertisement, uh, you can find this, uh, his deep, more deep dive into coroutines in our Kotlin Conf. Yes, I know this, 30 seconds more, and I have two more slides. Uh, another thing of <laughs> advertisement is uh, the Kotlin book, probably you know it, it's, now it's finished, it doesn't cover coroutines in any sense, but it covers all the rest Kotlin. Yeah, and I forgot to mention that at this conference I will do the workshop that also doesn't cover coroutines, but covers all the, all the rest uh, Kotlin. And thank you. Have a nice Kotlin. I must say, I must say when you gave your Kotlin talk two years ago at Voidcom, you were already very convincing and everything, but now you're obviously glowing from inside as a matter of success. <laughs> yeah. Thanks okay. a lot. Before we get into the Q&A, is Gautier already in the room? Yes, he's here. Sid, Gautier is here. You, no need to, to look for him longer, because Gautier is the one who's going to give our next talk. But we have time for one or two questions to Svetlana. Are there any? Yes, I have yes. a question. So, um, beside the quote you mentioned, you didn't give a real opinion on uh, efficiency, Kotlin or RX. Can you state that anymore? So, you said that uh, both are fine, but there is no difference in efficiency. Is that correct? We, uh, I say, I say, actually, I can, uh, we, we, uh, for for this, we have uh, we need real application, we need real comparison, and we need benchmarks. So I don't, I, I can't, uh, I don't have these big applications in mind with exact comparison. But in essence, coroutines are implemented as quite efficient because they, efficient because they are lightweight and they are, uh, they are cheap. But uh, for real thing, we need to weight benchmarks okay. and real comparison. And especially for Android applications, there there is some some circumstances. So 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 we need to wait for that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think this guy was in front of me. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Thank you for the talk. I'm already a big fan of yours. I bought the idea. And uh, my question uh, is always also aims at emphasizing where the performance improvement come from, comes from. In the example by Roman Yelizarov, where he outputs uh, 100,000 of dots, uh, and, yes. he, uh, and he uses coroutines, and he suggests the reader to use uh, uh, um, the same amount of threads. But uh, that is not really fair. Uh, a more fair suggestion would be uh, use a, um, an executor with the same amount of threads as the common pool in coroutines. Yes. And uh, uh, then in the loop uh, run, uh, well, 100,000 runnables. That would be fair. Uh, yeah, competition and, uh, between core and I can say and that uh, this, uh, when we compare the time threads with coroutines, if you try to, for instance, decrease the amount of sleep, for that example, you will also want uh, um, 
I won't see this, uh, the same difference, the same behavior. Behavior. So I would say that that example is just like Mokhetic example tries to convince you to, to read more about coroutines. And as I told before, we just need uh, we need the benchmarks. It, 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 it's it's like I can say coroutines are better, but but the other guy will say Rx is faster and what? So no, we it's don't. so we need something real in the future. Now we uh, have three more very brief questions since we have actually to just a, a small announcement. I'll be here. Uh, I think that area yeah. for some okay. time. So Thank probably we will we'll give time for the next talk yeah. for the next speaker. Okay. And uh, you will ask me all these questions uh, ju just there, just after the talk, Would or okay any time well? afterwards. Does yeah, that work? Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Sedana, thank you. Thanks a lot.